welcome again to uh, Richard just left. Welcome again to Mango Seed Selectors, and in our selector chair this morning we have with us Jack Salt. What up, Jack? What up, <laughs> Mango Seed? So, uh, <laughs> so, so we played with you, Jack, in Bristol in one of your projects, right? And I and and we're just chatting a little bit, and you have many, many projects. So, what, what, yeah. did, what, what when did we, when did we meet you, and what did we, which project were you in when we met you? I have no idea when it was because time seems to have like disappeared uh, yeah, back, yeah, back there in the past. Yeah, uh, but it was it was definitely over a couple of years ago. That's about as far as I can go. Uh, that that was with um, a group called Buku Krasu, and we like uh, do kind of New Orleans nineteen uh, fifties Doctor John New Orleans boogie woogie mixed with um, uh, yeah all sorts of other stuff, Latin-y kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, we have. Um, uh, in the band, we uh, our bassist is uh, uh, Corey Athelaney Wallace. Yeah, uh, yeah, boy. Big yeah, up, Corey. Yeah, yeah. Trini from Trini. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. So met met the Trini crew there, which was great. Yeah. So you are, so, so Jack, you're a beatboxer, uh, musician. You use your mouth. Tell us about it. Um, yeah, so I play, I mean, I'm uh, primarily a beatboxer uh, and most of most of what I do with music actually is um, acting as basically the drummer, but the mouth drummer for bands that uh, that uh, can't afford a drum kit, you know, or don't have a car to take it in. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I'm involved in a few different projects doing that and I, I also sing as part of a uh 72 piece contemporary music choir as well where i sing and beatbox uh that's called murmuration um and i've also played the guitar in some projects as well but mostly mostly beatboxing and now looping as well i'm starting to start to get my loop station involved nice how, how's, how's it going with the loop in how's the loop station working out? Yeah, it's all right. I've got it right here, actually. I've just just been having a little play around with it. Um, it's uh, it's a bit of a love hate relationship, really. I kind of <laughs> like during lockdown, I was like, great, and now I've got loads of time to kind of, you know, things I don't have my bandmates, I can just focus on uh, uh, getting on the loop station. And I've definitely, I definitely feel like I've kind of learned lots of things about it. Uh, but it's also quite a it's quite a beast, and it's quite kind of it's a lot to take in. And there's so much you can do. There's so many like like limitless options. I think I need. Uh, I need kind of uh, some limitations to be able to work within, if you know what I mean, because it's so it's so enormous. But no, it's it's great. I do feel like I've pushed it forward a little bit over lockdown as well. Um, but wanna yeah, wanna keep developing it. I directed a show with um with an artist named Coco Brown, and she uses a loop station, and um it she's in I mean she's an amazing artist, but she's incredible at her loop station and all the different things she can do with it. It's it's absolutely phenomenal how she just builds a track and you'll just be sitting there and she'll just be like, oh, and I feel like we should have this in it. And then all of a sudden you have a drum kit, a brass section, a bass guitar, whore, uh, uh, violins. And you're like, how are you doing this with your mouth? This is insane. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It has so many, so many options and things you can do. And all the effects are built into the one I've got as well. So you can just... Yeah, you can combine all the effects and just uh, play around with it and see what happens. Um, yeah, it's great. I mean, there's there's also a, I, I find like a bit of a danger with it that you can just well not not a danger really, but you can end up just like playing around with it forever and just freestyling out tracks and you know they they mostly come out pretty good, but uh, it feels like it's harder to nail down a few tracks sometimes and be like, okay, what did I do just then? Let's see if I can actually work that out from start to finish so you could perform it live again but you know I do, I do like the improvisational side of it as well but um I guess I guess but part of my thing is that I'm so used to playing with other people that um mm. it feels weird just sitting in my room pressing buttons sometimes like I feel like I want to be feeding off other people so uh, mm -hmm. I quite often be meeting up with other people and jamming with them on the loop station you know just get a vocalist or a lead lead instrument and you just get so many more ideas um, so apart from Go, go, Rich, go, Rich. Like, how, how have you managed, like, you're in so many projects, right? And also with the loop station, without the loop station, playing guitar, not playing guitar, being in the giant choir. Um, how did you find, like, I've just got this image of you that you used to just walk around, 
find a musician, sit down by a campfire with them and start beatboxing and go, hey, let's make a band. And you just kept doing that. Like, mm. how did you find that many people that want to beatbox <laughs> that? Oh, uh, yeah, by moving back to Bristol, really. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of endless and it's such a, it's such a tight scene. It's, it's quite a, sm well, it's not a small scene, but it, you know, you get to meet people pretty quickly. It was all quite crazy, actually. I moved back, I was out in Spain for like five years um, and I moved back and I kind of, uh, I decided, I thought, right, I'm going to join a band and try and play a gig at a festival. That's all I want to you know, uh, um, achieve. And I'd only been beatboxing for a couple of years as well. And then, um, and then within like two years, I I'd, I'd found myself in four bands and was playing like 20 festivals a year. And it just, it just exploded. I think, I think I went from no bands to three bands in about a week. There was a, <laughs> then there was a crazy week where through a, a combination of a few random meetings, we were like, Hey, do you want to join my band? Hey, do you want to join my band? And all these <laughs> things kind of started at the same time. And then suddenly I was like, uh, realized that I had to stop getting involved in new projects <laughs> so I could give them the kind of energy and time that they, they deserved uh, to get going. And then, you know, I mean, to be fair, they kind of, it's not like they're all, I mean, not all of them are particularly active at the moment, to be fair. And even over the years, they kind of, you know, some take a back burner and drop off and stop and then new ones start. And uh, so, yeah, it all depends. Some, some are gigging a lot, some are, aren't gigging so much. Um, yeah, just trying to kind of give give them all the energy they they deserve, really. Can I ask you something? So, so you you are the the drum kit, right? The drum kit and the drummer in a in a particular project, right? How, how what is that? What does that feel like being being because the, the drum is a pretty important thing. You're holding down all the all the, the, the low end and the bottom end and, and you're driving the whole thing forward. What does that feel like to, to, to not, to one, not have the kit, two, to, to be that, to have that responsibility for so many different kinds of genres and so many different kinds of music? Well, I guess it feels like what it does to be a drummer. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny really, cause, cause it's not the most, it's still not the most common thing. I'm kind of quite surprised there aren't more beatbox led bands like uh driven bands to be honest with you like for the number of beatboxes that there are in the world these these days and so many seem to still be just doing very much solo kind of things um i mean it feels great uh and it's kind of um i guess what you know for what i can't uh like i love drummers as well so i i love watching drummers and i i just see that there's there's some things which they can do having you know <laughs> two legs and two arms doing loads of things that I just simply can't do and I can kind of do an imitation of it but I can't really do that but then at the same time because I'm using my my mouth and my voice there's a load of things that I can't do that sorry that, that I can do that they can't do right uh, so it just I think yeah I find it kind of um I guess it just gives a different spin on a lot of music that you've heard before because you you know with most bands are driven by drums so just having it uh having it switching up into uh, into kind of beatbox sounds, which are obviously imitating things from drum kits a lot of the time as well anyway, but um, it just gives it a, a, a bit of a different feel, basically. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I don't know, I've always, I think, um, like a lot of a lot of beatboxes are very, uh, in the beatbox world, there's a lot of, uh, there are lots of sounds and techniques and ways that people are pushing it forward and there's lots of battling that goes on for example and I am kind of I kind of watch it in like you know being equally as inspired as I am kind of you know <laughs> crestfallen by 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 the levels to which they're taking it and it's great um but there's but there's there's quite there's quite a kind of quite a lot of kind of ego in that as well I find but um I, I've always valued having a solid like kick, hat and snare that is in time regularly and punchy way over complications. Um, uh, well, you know, like having, having uh, doing a million and one sounds in a gig just isn't necessary yeah. when you're a beatboxer and you have a full, sometimes, you know, an eight piece band or a seven, you know, whatever, a 72 piece choir, you don't want a, you don't want to fill the space too much. You're just an instrument. And I've, I've learned, being a beatboxer is basically being an instrument just like any other instrumentalist when sometimes sometimes I could literally just be doing a kick for almost an entire song and it may not be the most interesting thing for me but that's not the point the point is we're making a song together as a band and I really like my role in that that uh, I'm holding down a kind of regular 
kick that other people can play off, which is what, you know, sometimes what drums are doing. And then other moments you get chances to to break out and be a bit more kind of inventive and, and creative with it. But yeah, essentially I see myself as another instrument uh, that sometimes needs to do really simple things just to hold it down for other people to play around. Oh man, Jack, I think that's the most useful thing I've heard all week. You saying that that um, being in a band is, is, you know, it might be the most interesting thing for you to do, but but fill in the whole sound, that it, add into the add into the collective sound is sometimes way more important than than showboating and doing your own thing. And that's you know, mm, yeah, completely. I mean, that, that's one of the things I def- I love about being in a band is that is that one I get to travel around with my mates all the time, which is pretty useful. And I was saying this to somebody, I was like, if you could find three men that you don't mind being trapped in a car with for hours on end, then you have found, <laughs> you have found your band, right? <laughs> and we travel, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. we travel all over the place and I feel really pleased about that. But also it's just like be, be involved in creating the overall sound of the band and not trying to just do your own thing. If you want to do that, you could you go and be a solo artist, you know what I mean? Yeah, completely. You know, it's that that's the beauty of it. You know, you want to you're it's it's not about it's not, you know, hopefully not about ego and not about just showing what you can do. It's 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 what you create together. I mean, I know it sounds cheesy, but it is literally that. And it's like you can get so much joy from even if your part is the most basic thing in the world. The fact is, if you're creating beautiful music around that, then I'm like more than happy to just do exactly that and nothing more. And sometimes, I mean, I can't remember who who it was that said that uh, it's like it's not what you play it's, it's what you don't play you know that 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 kind of thing of being with experienced musicians or people in a band when sometimes sometimes I just literally stop and don't do anything because I think <laughs> I think it would sound better without me <laughs> even when you know when I'm playing with bands or in jams or something like that because often I get this um because people aren't so used to beatboxers being the drum being the drums that sounds like a stupid thing but like in in a in a jam sessions uh, uh, situation it's quite hard if there is a drummer there to get them to be like okay i'm a i'm a drummer too <laughs> um can you stop playing for a bit and i will just hold it down but it doesn't really happen like that because the drum is so used to being the thing that's holding it all down so to be able to convince them that i'm not like a you know, I'm not a beatboxer that does loads of vocal scratching and just does loads of sound effects for hours on end or whatever. I like, I actually like being the drummer. So sometimes it works really well and you can kind of complement each other just as drummers can do. And you can play, play both at the same time. You find how to fit in the gaps or sync up sometimes. But sometimes I just literally just drop out and do nothing. And I'm like, right, this doesn't need it. Like, not in a bad way at all. I'm happy to sit back and watch the drummer do, do his or her thing, you know, but not... Uh, overly fill the space with loads of loads of beatbox and bass as well you know that's that's the other thing as well because I've got lots of kind of bass sounds that I can do but I'm often playing with bassists so I kind of leave them out a lot of the time because it's just not necessary. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about tell us about Ushibaba. Ushibaba um yeah so Ushibaba um I don't know how long we've been going for now maybe seven years seven eight years something like that and uh we are we were an eight eight piece, I think, a, a biggest eight piece with a dancer at one point, and now we're down to seven. Uh, we're a um, kind of what do we call ourselves these days. We're like uh, I like to call it hardcore folk, but you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if that <laughs> that really sums it up. But it's kind of like um, gypsy jungle, uh, turbo folk stuff. It's a nice invented genre, but then kind of because. <laughs> <laughs> which then becomes a genre if you mention it enough times it now becomes a thing I love it when that happens you know when you <laughs> we do you know and it go, comes on the radio and you're just like this is so funny how it's now become a thing because we just said it was a thing you know doing gypsy jungle turbo folk step you know like, <laughs> it's just like yeah why not great um but yeah it's kind of um we used to do more Balkan stuff. We we still do quite quite a bit of Balkan stuff, but it's kind of folk music from uh, around the world, really, I guess. But around uh, Eastern Europe, but also um, in like Western part of Europe as well. Um, and we mix it with, yeah, I don't know, quite a few different. We we do uh, originals as well, so we do stuff in funny time signatures as well, and it's very it's kind of like really danceable uh, folk. But I hope that's got a bit more uh, 
intricacies than just being something that you jump up and down to. I've, um, it's nicely kind of uh, constructed hardcore so folk. Uh, what's the track we should check out? Um, I've sent you a link to um, Pope Leo, I think it's called. Oh, Leo. So, so this is our, um, we just put out, well, sorry, just put out, I said I, uh, about Christmas time, actually, we, we brought out uh, our newest EP, uh, and it's just come up on Spotify this week, actually, just, uh, ah. uh, <laughs> we finally put our things on Spotify. The and links, all links, all links are down below of all the music we're going to talk about today. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, so so check it out. There's there's also um, a really good video we made uh, in in the woods near here uh, with people dressed up as um, medieval planets. Uh, <laughs> and we're all running around in the woods um, and jumping up and down on trampolines and things like that with, uh, with strobe lights and flower and stuff being thrown at us. Uh, so check that out as well, um, same, same song uh but yeah so that's 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 our our latest ep that we've done which we're we're very happy with cool. we got it out just like not long before lockdown started as well which is also a good thing <laughs> i've been listening to um to industry uh mm -hmm. uh Kwan versus space robots <laughs> yeah so this is that's a funny thing so so that's um do you know youth have you heard of youth the yeah. uh frozen there you back again hey are we here hello you back again hello hello yeah we're there we're there we're there yeah so youth have you heard of youth the, yeah, the producer no yeah yeah so he's i got he's produced i didn't really know how much he's produced but he's produced so many huge huge people anyway but he um yeah we uh through through some kind of uh connections he's uh he basically wanted to do a remix of one of our tunes. <laughs> so this this is actually a song from the last album that he's remixed and we put and we put it on the new EP. It's it's pretty mental, isn't it? It's great. It's uh... it's brilliant man. It just <laughs> you're know, kind of going, okay, this song is just doing whatever it wants to do. I love it. I know you never quite know where it's gonna go, do you? It just yeah. uh, it just flies off in different directions. But yeah, it's great. All right, so, um, let's, so before we run out of time, I want to talk about Incubus because one of the things we're asking all the guests is to tell us an album that they love um, that means something huge to them. And you picked Incubus. Um, home, what was the name of the album? Home. Um, uh, make Yourself. Make Yourself, right. Yeah. Make Yourself. Yeah, so Incubus, uh, the reason why, yeah, when, it, when you asked me, like, what, yeah, pick one album, is that. It, it was probably one of one of the key albums of my of my teenage years like it kind of I don't know it defined what I was what I was into there and I and I hadn't listened to it for years but then I was um I was uh, in a car with someone last last week and they had it on CD and I was just like oh wow this album he's like yeah I love it as well so we put it on and we and I love it when you haven't heard something in so long, but you're able to sing along to every single word and you actually know every single nuance of every tune that's coming on. You're like, wow, this is like so deeply ingrained in me. And it just like actually helped in some ways form me, I think, you know, as as I feel like music does. And uh, uh, we're back again. We're there. Yeah, we're here, we're here. yeah, there, there. Cool. And uh, yeah, and it just... Um, yeah, just transported me back to that time. We just sang our way through the album. But yeah, I think it's just a really beautifully constructed album and really well produced and just well written. And yeah, I don't know. So Quite Rich, catchy as well. So Rich, I see you shaking your head. Are you an uh, uh, Inky West guy too? Yep. Um, uh, I was the first person I know that had that album in Trinidad uh, when I was at university. Um, I used to rollerblade around listening to it and try not rollerblade too hard because CD players in the day couldn't handle bumps. And so I used to rollerblade around listening to that and delivering um, food from the vegetarian cafes. Uh, it was a good time. And the songs, like, they mean stuff to me and I have memories attached to them. Like certain songs, I remember being at, at a certain party and standing there and seeing someone across the way, like really, really vividly. And also, um, when when they first came out on Incubus and they did uh, the Family Values tour and a lot of attention went their way, no one in Trinidad in the rock scene liked them except for me and everyone used to give me shit. And then this album came out and everyone's like, oh my god, I love Incubus. Why why didn't anybody like them? I don't know. I thought they were thought they I thought people thought they were just trying to jump on the new metal bandwagon, but I think people put them in there because they had a DJ and then like. 
Yeah. They're not really a new metal band at all, though. I mean, he's not, he's, he's not even a rapper. Like, surely that's a, that's a key part of being a new metal band. Okay, they got a DJ, but like, uh, it's, yeah, it's, 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 he's, he's, a, he's a singer, he's a vocalist, and it's got so much more musicality than a lot of new metal. I'll be yep. honest with you, it feels like. Um, and another thing I really love about that album, it's one of those albums where you listen to it and you're like, okay, that's my favourite song. And then you keep listening to it, you're like, I oh, know, that's my favourite song now. And I think I've probably gone through about every single song in the album, switching which is my favourite song. Um, so yeah, so, so it's one of those question. albums. There's a question for both of you. Did it, did it change, change you musically at all, that album? Me, yes, because I was a full new metal head and I got into it because a part of me, which is the most rappy. Uh, and then um, uh, it just made me realize where bass could be instead of, because bass in new metal is very, or, and um, it was just like these really cool bass lines. Because there's jazz, there's jazz in there. Consequence is a jazz song and there's like jungle drum beats in there and stuff. So like those are things I hadn't really heard before. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I'm. I'm sure it has for me. Like, I don't. I don't feel like <laughs> there's. There's lots in the things that they do that I actually do today. But I'm sure it has kind of informed me. Like, I think there have been other people since then that have more. It's probably closer to the kind of music that I make today. But it's definitely inspired me, and it definitely made me. Yeah, look at kind of don't know, music in a different way at that time, and kept me in this kind of area of music whilst I was going through my teenage years. Did, which did is you? Really, Crucial. Did you ever see the video for Drive? Yeah, yeah. I mean, no. Drive was Drive was the one that actually got that got me into them first. Actually, I think because what it, I think Incubus were one of the ones that I think I was into kind of softer stuff, and then mm -hmm. Incubus, not like they're really heavy, but like they yeah. Drive kind of lured me in. I was like, wow, that's so catchy. That's really nice. And then I listened through the other rest of the album. I was like, all oh, right, it's quite a bit kind of heavier. And then I started listening to it more. I was like, actually, I quite like this. And then it, I guess it, you know, it led from you know, Incubus to Rage Against the Machine and System of a Down and uh, Queens, Queens of the Stone Age What's and that? things like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it kind of helped lead me onto that kind of, that, you know, I never went super, super heavy, but it led mm. me kind of into an area of music that I feel, yeah, and still informs me today, really. I don't, I, I, I listened to the album yesterday and I've never listened to it before and I only I only ever knew that one song, Drive from them. Mm. Um but it was it's one, it's such a good album. And I think Pardon Me is an incredible song, man. It's mm. an incredible song. And then I was reading up about them and they they grafters, you know, they they worked so hard in in the um in the early notes to 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 just tour and be out there and be with their fans and and they did this thing right so so pardon me wasn't getting any any radio play at all so what they did is that they went around to all the radio stations that would have them and they played it acoustic really that's, wow amazing and that's what just lured people into the song and, and a bunch of the radio stations started playing the acoustic version of it which led them to start to play the album version of it which is what ultimately shut the album off right and they didn't release drive first which i find really interesting because you listen to the album and you go obviously this is your first single right drive has to be the first single of the album it wasn't it was the fourth single and by the time they released it, it they were they went stratospheric after that mm, wow yeah that's great it's a good the, story um, good to hear that the video of drive the cartoon was all drawn by the lead singer brandon and the drummer yeah, wow. Yeah. I didn't actually know that. That's great. Really talented. I only found out when I was looking up stuff too, as you do when you're doing these kind of things. You're like, oh, let me see if you can find anything. <laughs> what? How didn't I know that? So, Jack, uh, we almost out of time. Tell us where we can find you next or what to go and look for or what are interesting wow. projects. Well, you know your okay. Project <laughs> How long have I got? How long have I got? I do shout on. Um, go for it. So I've got, um, so what, yeah, one, one thing I've been doing over, over lockdown, uh, well, one way you can find me, if anyone wants to learn how to beatbox, I've been teaching uh, beatbox online um, all the way through lockdown and having loads of fun with it. Uh, so yeah, get in touch if you want to, if you want to learn how to do some beats uh, online, have some fun. Um, I've also been doing this uh, as a kind of like a folk and audio 
visual folk project with uh, Kesti uh, Morrison, who's the uh, lead singer of The Inexplicables and Buka Krasu. Um, and she has basically uh, rewritten <clears throat> uh, a load of um, folk, so uh, folk tales uh, from uh, Devon, Cornwall, Bristol, Somerset kind of area, uh, so the Southwest, uh, and taken some folk songs of which I've worked out guitar and beatbox and kind of singing drones with. And we've recorded it all. And then we're getting a load of audio visual, a random load of people filming themselves whilst listening to the music stroke uh, paintings that people have done from these places. So it's this whole kind of audio visual project that we're putting into one long video uh, with uh, Chris Lucas, who's a really great um, uh, video, vi uh, video man. I don't know what the word is. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> How would you get in? How would you get in touch with you if you wanted to join in with that project, or is that timeline already? Uh, no, no. This is this is like a. This is a um, I was actually in the studio yesterday, just uh, finishing it off, just like uh, doing the final kind of mixing session on it. So this 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 project is like yeah yeah it's uh, it's, it's just been uh, two or three of us involved in it, uh, but it's all kind of getting coming coming around to you know it might be ready in within hopefully within the next month or the next few weeks is what we're thinking um uh, the inexplicables uh, uh latest um video as well uh we we've, we've got an ep coming with that as well but uh but uh, lockdown hit just before we had a t we had a chance to bring it out in normal time so we're kind of sitting on an ep at the moment uh wow. but this is a this is a video called um called audio eyes which uh, which is also made by chris lucas who's the video guy for this folk project as well uh, yeah, what, check it what, out. What, what's it about? What's it about? Because like I listened to the song and watched the video, and I've got two potential ideas of what it's about. Are you, are you the kind of band that tells people what stuff's about? Because what's the lyrical um, content? Uh, so I, I lost you a second there. Are you talking about Audio Eyes here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Audio Eyes is actually about uh, sleep paralysis and insomnia. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, the, the, the chorus being audio eyes, visualize, don't go back to sleep, there are nightmares there. Yep. Um, so it's kind of like a, the whole video and the whole concept of it is like not knowing whether you're awake or asleep. And I guess you can take that to as many levels as you like, really. <laughs> yeah. um, Thanks, Jack. Thanks for hanging out with us. You're welcome. Yeah, nice chatting to you. Good and to like see you. Said, everything that we talked about today is going to be in the show notes down below. Um, and all is left for me to do is say thank you, Jack. Thank you, Rich. And we will see you in the next episode. Thanks, mate. Really. Thanks, guys. Take care. Go go Rich and Nico in the morning. Like, share, and subscribe uh, to all our videos. Um, and if <laughs> buy our <laughs> shit <and> stuff, <laughs> he's gonna keep laughing. <laughs> but seriously, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. Come again next week, Tuesday. Peace.